talking to George Kuros today, who is a school principal, and I think um, an important uh, point of view that we really haven't talked about a lot. George, um, why don't you just briefly introduce your, yourself and what you do and where you do it? Yeah, uh, my name is George Kuros. I'm a division principal. So actually, I'm not based in the school anymore, but I work with all of our schools. Um, I was a principal for several years and uh, also an assistant principal. Um, I'm located in Parkland School Division, which is just west of Edmonton. So we're not a terribly large school district. We have about 10,000 kids, 22 different schools, um, but they're uh, spaced out quite far geographically. So a lot of the work that I do with our schools is to kind of help use social media to connect our schools so that we can um, help build innovative learning environments and share what we do with each other easily, but also share what we do with the world so we can bring innovators into our schools, um, but, but for free. That's, that's kind of the way we see it. What are the kind of things that you like to show off these days that, that are really working that you recommend to other, uh, other principals to uh, look into? Yeah, well, some of, the, some of the work that we're doing is more kind of project-based um, schools so that we can kind of educate everybody at the same time. We don't uh, focus specifically on any group like teachers first, then students, then parents. Um, we're trying to bring everyone into the learning. So we're really looking at doing this as a learning community. So some of the projects we have is, one is called a Learning Leader Program. And even though we, we gave teachers a device, uh, an iPad, for them to use, the, the focus was not actually the iPad. The focus was um, networked learning, uh, using mobile devices in the classroom, and cloud computing. So although they had the device, and oftentimes we get mixed up because we put a device in the hands of teachers, and then we get them to focus solely on the device, not the learning that can happen because of it. And so um, we brought about 60 teachers in out of, honestly, it's a, which is a huge chunk, that's 60 of 500 of our entire school division. And uh, we brought them in and we did six face-to-face -face, um, sessions. But what happened is that every session was blogged about so you can actually read the session and go through it. But then in between each session, um, teachers that were part of it actually had to blog um, what they were learning and share what they were doing in an open environment so that anyone could partake in this, including students, uh, parents, um, anyone that was not officially a part of it, but also anyone else in the world. So we called it a, a blended learning environment, a blended PLC, where we would have this focus and then we can kind of go through it and share kind of our success and also our struggles openly and bring in people from all over the world. So it was actually pretty amazing because you saw people, educators, um, sharing that how helpful it was to them that we did this. And what, what we've usually done in the past in schools in general is we might have created some type of um, online environment, but we keep it totally closed to only the people that are participating in it. And the way we saw it is that this is about leadership, and so leadership en enables other people to become leaders, become, to learn openly. So it was really interesting. Um, and as those people developed and did that learning, they actually had to work within their own schools to share what they learned. So it wasn't just about the 60 people. The 60 people got the device, got the learning. They had to share it and spread it around. So um, we really believe in doing everything in an open environment. We don't have, um, we don't use anything exclusively in a closed environment. Everything is blogged publicly. So that's one of the projects. Another one that we've done uh, that's kind of, um, morphed into something bigger is our 184 project, 184 days of learning. And what that is, um, is basically we, we shared it, we copied it from another school um, district in Atlanta, and their site is Edu, um, Edu 180 ATL. And so we modeled it after that. And so what it is is that we showcase one person in our school division every single day, and we ask the question, what did you learn? And so it's not a teacher, it's not a superintendent, it's not just a parent, it's not just a student, it's everybody. So we're showing ourselves as a true learning organization. And um, so we learn different things as we go. And what's cool is that um, a lot of the learning that happens actually happens outside of school. So people are sharing life experiences, things are happening. But we're showing that we have to be learners alongside of our students if we're really going to progress forward. 
What's happened is that um, through social media, through face-to-face, -face, through, again, sharing this in an open learning environment, um, people are taking notice and saying that they want to do the same thing because they want to highlight uh, the things that we're doing. So a group of people got together and decided how can we share this so that more people are seeing this stuff and more people are seeing these ideas. So now other schools are starting to make their own models or school districts or even classrooms and we're all sharing to one hashtag and this is planned to happen. Um, I like to say in the fall but in reality it can happen anytime because we're inviting schools all over the world and they can be doing it right now if they wanted to. And so we're calling it uh, the Learn 365 project. So it's not only our organization seeing the learning, even though it's open to Twitter, but we're starting to connect more and more people so that they can share openly and, um, you know, comment, connect, write. And so kind of when we talked about it, one of the things was that we really um, focus on literacy, and many schools do. And so if we can get kids writing more, um, that's a great thing. And so all of these people are usually doing a guest post for their first time and then they're getting an opportunity to see the power of blogging and what it does and how comments can create a conversation. So we're giving each person this opportunity to guest post before they just jump into their own blog. And a lot of them have seen extreme power of it um, because we're starting with our students' digital portfolios across the entire district with 10,000 kids. So we're giving them a taste of it and putting it out there and open, but we're doing it in a safe and thoughtful way, which many school districts are, are really worried about, you know, what can happen to my kid if they're blogging. So we want to do it that kids have all the opportunities, but we're doing it and so that their parents and our schools know that they're safe. Well, so you bring up an issue there of the, the yeah. fear of the Internet. Maybe you're more enlightened in Canada, and a lot of school districts in the U.S., uh, it's prohibited to allow students to have internet access and there's a lot of fear of what's going to happen there. What what message would you have right. for other principals um, about fear of the internet? Yeah, and that's, that's a great point because a lot of the stuff that we don't do is because of fear. And um, for example, many schools we see them that they block Twitter and Facebook um, and what they do is they actually encourage kids to use their own device for unfiltered access. So we've talked about that. We've opened Wi-Fi in our schools and they have filtered access. So they still have uh, access to social media networks, all of those things that they would use. Um, what they don't have access to, which is has no educational values, pornography sites or gambling sites. So when they come into our school districts and they have Wi-Fi enabled on their phones, um, they're actually having a filtered version. We're ensuring their safety as opposed to saying, well, we're not going to provide them internet access. And then they do, they have unfiltered access while they're in schools doing these things. Um, and what happens a lot of time, Howard, is that when schools have that, when they block stuff, they also don't talk about it. And what you're doing is you're setting your kids up to do these unsafe things either during school hours or after school hours because they don't know any better because no one's talking about it because we don't have to. So when we talk about fear in our own school district, we talk about it in the way that we need to kind of be ahead of the curve. So I talked with an educator today and um, their school district doesn't use Twitter or Facebook or connect in that kind of way yet. They're looking to do it, but they haven't felt comfortable because they're scared of that unknown. So when I actually looked at um, what would be a logical hashtag, and I'm not going to share what it is, but uh, when I looked at what would be a logical hashtag that they should start using, we actually looked it up. And what we found was parents and um, community members we're actually creating a digital footprint, a digital identity for that school district that was very negative. So I looked it up and I saw people that weren't educators, weren't able to, um, able to tell the story um, of what is actually happening in schools, telling the story of that district. So they're actually creating a digital identity for that district that is very negative. So we're on the other end of the spectrum where we don't want that happening. Um, we, we encourage uh, debate. We encourage actually people being critical of the things that we're doing because we don't learn anything when everyone agrees with us. We want them to be engaged in conversation, but we want to be at the table actively involved in the conversation as opposed to outside of the restaurant. So we are, we are there engaged in the conversation. So a lot of schools look at it using Twitter and Facebook and they focus on branding 
And um, that's not our focus. Our focus is learning. Our focus is always learning. And so what is happening is we are being branded as a learning organization. We don't just promote uh, events or anything. We promote things that we're learning about, sharing. And this is, happens from our superintendent to principals um, to students to parents. They're all connecting in this shared learning space. And so it's not only fear that's driving us, we, we're doing things because it makes it better. And the more we can get people involved in what's happening in the classroom and the learning, the better students are going to do. And that's a proven fact. Number one, number one uh, impact on student learning is parents reinforcing the learning happening in schools. So if we can open that window through blogging, Twitter, Facebook, that's what we want to do. So what, what resources would you recommend for principals who are inspired by what you're saying and want, want to, uh, to emulate it? Yeah, um, the, the, a site I started actually um, years ago, and people kind of get fused because they're, they're looking at these sites as ways that people are making money. And actually, um, they're very cheap to run. The, the one site is connectedprinciples.com, and it has administrators from all over the world sharing best practices and um, sharing what, um, what they're doing in their schools. And everyone that writes for it is writing for free. In fact, since I'm the one who owns the site, I actually um, lose money of my own money because I think it's that important where I have to pay for hosting and uh, website URL, but I believe it is that important that we bring uh, school administrators together to not only um, you know connect and learn because principal can be a very isolated isolating job, but to also help um, give some idea of what principals that aspire to be, what they should aspire to be. And we want them, we want principals to be connected and uh, learning from each other. And so connectedprinciples.com is, is a, a fantastic one. And the way I look at it and the way I talk about is that I want my school to be the best, the best in the world, and we want our school division to be the best in the world. Now we don't stomp and hide um, hide what we're doing. We share it openly because we encourage our kids, the ones that we kids that we really enjoy working with are the ones that are willing to share their expertise and their learning with other students. So schools need to emulate that as well. So what we need to do is, um, what I talk about is that we take the best of the best. I can take anyone's ideas, share them and bring them to my own school and do what I need to do to make it what's best for my community. Now my best is not, uh, my ideas which I, of what is best for our school might not be what's best for another school because of their community, because of where they're at. So that's the whole thing about principal is being able to say, understand your community, build relationships and build some amazing schools. But I opened my, I opened my door to educators all over the world, not just principals, but students, teachers, um, educators, principals, superintendents. So I can take their ideas, modify them. But to me, it's really important that I don't just take, um, we also give back. And that's, that's a really important thing. It's kind of like the idea of give a penny, take a penny, not just take a penny, take a penny, take a penny. We share, we give back. And that, that's a huge thing. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can follow the hashtag CPChat, which is tied directly to Connected Principles. And it's just sharing uh, stuff that's going on in administration, but also sharing some really good ideas um, for educators and teachers that principals should be sharing with their staff, which is I think is really important because principals need to be more than managers. They need to be leaders, um, especially in the instructional, instructional sense. My big thing is that we are learners first before we're leaders, and people need to see what we're learning about because it helps push the vision and the culture of our schools. So that's why we do connect to principals. That's why we do that. So if you're just looking for somewhere to start, you don't even have to be on Twitter to check the CP chat hashtag out. Um, you don't have to have a blog to check Connected Principles out. It's just there. But we want people engaging, commenting, um, talking about things, and then um, actually learning, becoming more comfortable, and moving from their point A to a point B. Not just everyone has to be at the same level. So it's differentiated learning for administrators just like it would be for teachers. But the expectation in our school district is that principals have a point A, but they have to be moving all the time because we're learners. Wonderful. I'm hoping that when this video comes out, that, that will send a whole new crop of people to um, connected principals, and, and uh, the community will grow. So, thank thank you, George. This is uh, I hope inspirational to a lot of other principals out there. Yeah.
That would be great. And that's the idea. Like, I'm very proud of Connected Principles, but the really cool thing is, is I, very, I do very little work for it because um, I learned being a very competitive person myself that I do much better when I tap into the wisdom of others. And that's the whole point. And so that's, that's what we're doing. And, and the wisdom of others has accelerated that site, not just a couple guys. It's, it's about the community. And I think that's a really good thing. And there's some amazing uh, principles on there that I learn from every day. So I didn't realize how big of an impact it would have on my own learning uh, when I created it. And it's been absolutely huge. Wonderful. Thank you, George. Thank you, Howard.